Hey, this is Jeff, and we are here with USP Pro. In this video, we are going to look at custom fields and how to add them to any USP form. So let's get started. Here we have USP Pro installed and activated. So we can visit the USP form screen. And let's say that we want to customize a form and add some custom fields. We can choose any of these form demos here or we can create a new form. So let's create a new form to keep things simple and we will call this custom field demo and this title is only seen by us so we can name it whatever we want. We click publish and once we click publish we can scroll down and see that the plugin automatically adds three custom fields. Now these custom fields aren't included in the form. These are here so that we can define them however we want, and we'll see that here in a moment. For now, I want to show you how to change the number of default custom fields that are added to a form, and we can do that in the plugin settings. We go to the Advanced tab and scroll down to the Custom Fields section, and we see a setting here number of custom fields to auto-generate for each USP form. As you can see, there are currently are three custom fields that are auto-generated. Let's say we want to make that five instead. We click Save Changes. Now if we go back and let's delete this form and start over by clicking Add New. So now we click Publish and scroll down to see now we have five default custom fields ready to go. And again, these are not yet included in the form. They're just here to make things easier. Now, let's say we already have a form that exists. And let's say that we want to add another custom field without going through and deleting the form and auto-generating the custom fields. To do that, we just copy one of these go down here to enter new, paste it into place, and we need to make a change. Here we have one, form ID two, form ID three, four, five, and what do you suppose this one should be? Yes, it should be the next number six. So we do that, and WordPress will not let us add a new custom field unless there is a value, so that is why we add data required true. It just means the field will be required by the user. If we wanted to, we can make this false as well. So there we go. Now we click Update, and we see that we now have one, two, three, four, five, six custom fields ready to go for this form. So let's build a form and then add a couple custom fields to see how it works. Let's keep this form simple. Let's add a title, and we'll just use the default values. Let's add a name and a content field. And now let's take a look at how this looks on the front end. There's our title, name, and content. Now we also want to add a custom field to this form because that's what this is all about, custom fields. Let's say that we want to add a simple text field then all we need to do is copy the short code and add it to the form. And click Update. We have just added a custom field. So we refresh the page. Here we see our custom field added to the form with a label that says Example Label 1 and a placeholder that says Example Input 1. These are the default values for the label and placeholder. So let's change those. We go back to the custom field and we don't make any changes here. Instead, we go to the custom field definition. This is the first short code. And here's the first short code. So this is where we want to make changes. Now to add another attribute, we use the vertical bar. And then we can type in label. And then the pound sign is the separator. So we can add the custom label value, and we will call this 
custom field. And then we also want to add another vertical bar so we can add the placeholder attribute, pound sign, and now the value, and we will call this custom field as well. So let's go ahead and update the custom field, update the form, and then refresh the page. And we will see now that our custom label and placeholder have taken effect on the front end. Now where did we get these attributes from? The placeholder attribute and the label attribute. Well, we got these values from the USP Pro shortcode reference. And we see here a complete list of all USP Pro shortcodes. What we want to do is look at the custom field shortcode. And here we have all of the attributes that can be used. And there are a lot of them. It's very flexible. So these, these attributes enable us to create different types of fields with different properties and attributes and values and everything. Um, to first get started, though, it may be easier to take a look at the recipe guide. We have a recipe post for custom fields that makes it easy to get going. Uh, custom field recipes, here we have text fields, and these are the custom field definitions ready to go. So let's say we wanted to create a text field, we would copy, return to our form, and paste that right into place like so. Then we update, update again, refresh the page, and now we see that our custom field is changed. Likewise, we can add a range field by copying and pasting, update, update, and refresh the page. Now we have a range input. And there are lots of different recipes here. We can add different types of fields, not just text, but also text areas. Let's add a regular text area. Let's leave this custom field in place, and let's add a second custom field right here. We can delete that, and paste in, update, update again, and refresh the page. Oh, it didn't show up on the front end because we forgot to add the custom field to the form. So let's do that now. We now have the first custom field and second custom field added. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and they're defined right here. We have a text input and a text area. Now we can update the form and take a look on the front end. We have our range and our custom text area. And we could go through here with every different type of field just by copying and pasting and then add, remembering to add the, sh the uh, custom field shortcode to the form. So now we have three custom fields. So let's click Update, refresh the page, and now we have our Select menu right here. And there are so many options that we can uh, add to each field by simply playing with the attributes. And again, the attributes are all listed right here. So we can go in and add label classes, add custom attributes, specify the number of rows and columns. Just there's so much we can do here. That's basically the idea. We've added three custom fields to this form. Let's go ahead and submit this post to see how it looks on the, in the admin area and we'll call this test post and our name is already filled in automatically because we are logged into WordPress. If we were to log out then this would be empty. Then we have some content here. Select a custom range, custom text area, and we'll choose an option. Now with the form filled out we can submit the post and success. So now let's leave our form here and go over to the post screen and see our test post. Here it is with our test post title and content. And we scroll down and we see the custom fields that are attached to this post. Now if you don't see this custom fields panel here, you can go up to the screen options and choose which uh, panels or meta boxes are displayed. 
So we want to make sure that custom fields here is enabled. And that will display the custom fields meta box. And these are all the custom fields that are submitted with the post. They are all attached so we can use them and display them on the front end however we would like. And we will see that in a future video. For now, notice the fields that came through. The author, we have our range. Our first custom field was the range field and that was set at 18. Here's our custom text area and our select field. We selected option number one. So you can see here, this is the USP custom one for the first custom field, USP custom two for the second, and for the third, and so forth. And if we were to add other custom fields, they also would be listed here. So all of our custom fields that are submitted with the post are included or displayed here in the custom fields panel. So that's pretty much it for custom fields. Let's go back to the forms and we see again our three custom fields and the definitions for each of the fields right here. And that's all there is to it. And we will get further into custom fields and displaying custom fields in future videos, so stay tuned.